Now, the world's largest military air show got off to a blazing start today after a three-year break. The satellite event is expecting 180,000 visitors. And with temperatures predicted to rise, the organisers of the Royal International Air Tattoo at Fairford say they are well prepared for any problems, as Ken Goodwin now reports. There is so much heat reflecting off the runway, you can see it. Some visitors have come prepared with umbrellas and even a tent to provide a bit of shade. Others are slapping on the sun cream. Factor 50, yeah. I mean, I don't want to burn. And drinking plenty of water from the bowsers, which are dotted across the site. I think hydration is key to staying healthy through days like this. Rumour has it these are the, going to be the warmest days on record in the UK. So uh, I think water's the only way to get through it. And we're from Alaska, so anything over, you know, two degrees Celsius is hot to us. Drink plenty of water, sit in the shade. And suntan oil. oil. And hats. The medical centre is well prepared for any heat-related conditions like dehydration and sunburn. It's going to be really hot and um, out on the flight line in the sun it's, it's incredibly hot here um, and we're encouraging people to take some measures to avoid coming down with heat illness um, and allow them to have a good time at React really. Covid grounded the air tattoo for three years but as it opened with a fly past from the Red Arrows and the Boeing P-8 Poseidon maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft, the charity which runs the event is overjoyed that it is back on. It's absolutely marvellous. Uh, a sense of excitement, a sense of relief. Uh, it's been a really difficult uh, three years, so cancelling the last two shows, but here we are. The sun is shining, the gates are open, we're sold out. Uh, looking forward to a tremendous weekend. There has already been some amazing flying displays and there will be plenty more over the weekend. There are air forces from all over the world here with their own traditions. The 492nd Fighter Squadron adopted bowler hats in the 1950s to show solidarity with the UK when their base moved to RAF Lakenheath. Yeah, we all have bowler hats. Uh, whenever you uh, join the squadron, uh, you get a bowler hat. The afterburners glow hot as the jets roar into the sunshine. It is, some will say, a fitting start to an air show which has been in the shadows for three years. Ken Goodwin, ITV News, Fairford. Well, as you can hear, the uh, fire alarm has gone off here in Bristol, which means we have to join another programme in the West Country this evening. While we try to figure out where the uh, fire alarm is coming from, we'll leave you and move into the west of the region. Enjoy the rest of the programme if you can. The rest of the news will be on our website shortly after this bulletin. This, this really hot weather. Oh, it's, uh, it's been difficult. I'm drinking a lot more water than I normally drink. I'm having to carry more. Uh, I've stopped, just stopped and had an ice cream as well, so you know I'm trying to keep as cool as I can, uh, and just just power on really. Yeah, uh, imagine uh, treating yourself to an ice cream quite quite rewarding during this this sort of weather. You have been walking something like up to kind of 20 miles a day. I guess you're having to take it a bit slower at the moment. Yeah, uh, yesterday was a bit slower. I only ended up managing to do about 16 and three quarters. Uh, and that, at the end of the day, I looked at my altitude gain for the day and I gained 4,095 feet, which is equivalent to walking 16 and three quarter mile and climbing Snowden and in that heat. So, you know, it was a tough day yesterday, really tough day yesterday. Yeah, that's that lovely Cornish coastline for you. You are, of course, raising money for the uh, Gurkha Welfare Trust. Just tell us about that. Yes, I've raised £23,500 so far for the Gurkha Welfare Trust. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it for the Gurkha Welfare Trust is my first ship when I was in the Royal Navy was HMS Gurkha and we had Gurkhas on board, so I've had an affinity with the Gurkhas since 1977. So, uh, they're the very unassuming people. They had a massive earthquake in 2015 in Nepal, uh, which wiped out a lot of their houses and everything, and I've already earned enough to build three new houses in Nepal from my walk around the coast so far. Yeah, what a fantastic effort so far, Jim. You've got a few, few months left to go. What's the, what's the support been like on your journey through Cornwall? Uh, fantastic. Uh, we normally stay on somebody who's uh, an ex-sailor, ex-airman or ex-army. Uh, and just park our motorhome on their drive, connect it electric. Sometimes we get invited in for a meal, but even the campsites haven't charged us. Everybody's been, the generosity at Cornish people's been fantastic. Yeah, we'd expect, uh, we'd expect nothing less on your visit to the West Country. Uh, just before we started the interview, you had a, you had a hat on, because uh, it sounds like you're a bit like my son. You forgot to put sun cream on the top of your ears, Jim. 
Well, the problem is I had my first haircut uh, in Falmouth the other day, the first one I'd had since Berwick at the Scottish-English border. So I'd gone seven months without an haircut or a shave, uh, and, of course, it's, uh, it's caught the top of my ears. But normally I would have a, a floppy hat on to cover them up and cover the back of my neck up as well. Yeah, well, you'll need that sun cream and that, that floppy hat for the next few days. Jim, really good to get you on the programme. Thanks for your time. Good luck with the rest of the walk. Oh, he's doing well in that heat. Yeah. Yeah, Good exactly. on him. Need that floppy hat. <laughs> no, weather time now and Charlie is at the Met Office. Now, Charlie, a lot of people, I'm sure, want to enjoy the hot weather this weekend, but there are some serious warnings heading our way, isn't there? Yeah, that's right. As you saw earlier, this is kind of the likes of the heat we've never really been seen before across the UK. So it's really important that right now, today's been quite nice and quite comfortable, really, but it will feel a lot different during the early part of next week. But let's have a look at today's weather. We saw earlier at the coast it was gorgeous. This is how it was in Taunton a bit earlier on as well. Again, a lot of blue sky there, barely a cloud around. The river tone kind of glassy or mirror-like, if you like, so a lot of reflections there. It has just been a lovely end to this working week. But yes, you're right, we have some pretty incredible heat on the way. This next chart here gives you an idea of what we could look like if we get really hot. The idea of beating a UK record is now pretty high, 80% at least on Monday or Tuesday. And even getting up as much as 40 Celsius is not out of the question. So we want to watch and wait, really. And this next chart gives you just a reminder of those warning areas. Everywhere now within an amber warning, meaning we're probably going to get to at least 30 to 35 Celsius quite widely. More likely on Monday, it might be ever so slightly lower as we head through Tuesday. And we talked a lot about how the heat is going to affect us as people. Yesterday we touched on animals and pets, but if you're a wildlife lover, the simplest thing you can do is to make sure there's plenty of water around. That's one thing they're really going to struggle to find, and it's such an easy thing to keep all our little creatures happy as well. Here's the weather. Feels like home, whatever the weather. Valent boilers and heat pumps. Sponsors ITV West Country Weather. An amber warning then for uh, much of the West Country as we head through Monday and Tuesday. Heat will build as we head through this weekend, but really it's Monday and into Tuesday is that focus, that peak of where that heat will be highest. And the Atlantic shows that same high pressure trundling its way towards the UK. By the weekend, it's directly overhead. Into the start of next week, it's a little bit to the east, just to the right of the UK. And that's going to allow that heat to build in from parts of Spain and Portugal. But for the rest of this evening, it is really quite glorious. Bit of high cloud around. There's a little bit of a breeze around, but it's going to be really fine and quite warm as we head into tonight but not an uncomfortable night really i think most of us again will see those temperatures down to probably low teens i would have thought in the countryside maybe just to single figures so all things being relative pretty comfortable maybe the last kind of comfy night that we see for quite some time as for Saturday, well, we get off to a really sparkling start. A lot of sunshine right the way through the day. No massive change in temperatures. Most of us again up to the sort of mid-20s, but the north coast look, could see 26 or 27 degrees, and that's a bit of a sign of things to come. But the sea states will be pretty calm. High tide in Portland, for example, 10 in the morning, and again around 10 p.m. as well. It's beyond that we see the bigger changes. On Sunday, more of us getting into that high 20s category with a good deal of sunshine, a good deal of heat building. But Monday, you can see, is the day when we're probably going to see the peak of that heat. A lot of us easily into the low 30s. That will feel quite oppressive, I would have thought. Tuesday, still really, really hot, but perhaps not quite as hot. But we're also going to see some really hot and uncomfortable nights. So, yeah, take it easy out there. Valent. Sponsors ITV West Country Weather. Hello, Summer. Piri sponsors ITV Pollen Count. No change then in pollen levels as we head through the next few days with all that sunshine and those incredibly high temperatures. In fact, as we said yesterday, it's those which are stopping the pollen levels from getting into the very high category. But either way, it's not brilliant news for hay fever sufferers. Uh, so, Charlie, when, when can we expect temperatures to return to some sort of normal for this time of year? Well, probably by Wednesday, they'll start to become a little bit low. We might see a, bit, a little bit of rain, perhaps sort of breaking the heat down, but I don't think they're going to get really, really low. Perhaps more down to the levels we've seen today and yesterday. OK, Charlie, thank you. Just before, go, before we go, a reminder to take a look at our website this evening where dozens of rare violet sea snails have been washing up on the beaches on the Isles of Scilly and Cornwall. Although it's hard to establish exactly why they've been turning up in such large quantities, experts say it's likely due to sea conditions and sea temperatures. It's all online this evening.
Well, that's it from the two of us. I'll have the late news for you at 10.30. After a short break, the ITV News will continue with Lucrezia Milarini. Stay safe in that sunshine, but enjoy it if you can. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.